I think we're at a very special moment in the uh, evolution of AI and, and, and machine learning in particular. It seems like kind of the dream of AI is, is coming to life, is really materializing before our eyes. The Machine Learning and Optimization Group uh, is in an organization called Microsoft Research AI. And of all the groups in, in Microsoft Research AI, we are the most uh, mathematical group, the one that's uh, you know, closest to the mathematical and uh, algorithmic foundations. Optimization and convex analysis and you know, the related fields of mathematics are the, the engine that, that powers AI and machine learning. We feel that figuring out the foundations and the, you know, kind of having a deep understanding of what's happening inside the mathematics of these algorithms will enable us to develop the next generation of AI and machine learning techniques. Uh, so it's not just about finding clever ways to use existing techniques, which is what you know, most of the AI and machine learning community is doing nowadays. It's really about finding the next big thing. Turn left and walk to the end of the hallway. Turn right and go straight along the corridor. And in order to do that, what you have to do is, is basically start with fresh math on the whiteboard and, and, and develop new techniques, new theorems, uh, to get a deep understanding of why these algorithms work and why they don't. And, uh, and that's, why we, you know, that's why we invest so much in understanding the foundations of, of optimizations and, and the other related mathematical topics. My research is really focused on two big problems. One of them is in online learning, uh, the other one is in online algorithm. So in online learning, there is this uh, field of bandit optimization. So the key example, the one that has been driving the research on this since the early 2000s, is ad placement on the internet. So imagine that I'm running a website and my optimization variable is which ad do I present. Then when the user comes, I can decide to present an ad and see whether that person or not click or not uh, on it. But I don't know what would have happened if I had presented some other ad. So this introduces the trade-off between exploration and exploitation. Maybe I want to focus on the ad that I know is performing well, but from time to time I need to show an ad that I, don't, I did not evaluate its performance properly so far. My topic is probability theory, and these days that is of huge and growing importance in algorithms and machine learning, as randomization is key um, <coughs> to uh, modern algorithms. The other topic that is relevant here is, is game theory. In modern situations, we have many agents interacting, usually over the net, each with their own incentives, and uh, if we don't take that into account, then our assumptions about what these agents would do will be wrong, and that's what game theory is about. I'm a theoretician, uh, so most of the algorithms I develop, they're like theoretical constructs. Regarding high-dimensional geometry, the right way of thinking about it is while we live in like three-dimensional world, there are many applications in uh, machine learning, information retrieval, like computer science in general, where it's convenient to think of objects in a much higher dimensional space. So it could be as many as hundred or thousand dimensions or something like this. And uh, then to process these objects efficiently, uh, we need to like new kinds of algorithms. My research is attempting to solve like the uh, what are the best uh, algorithms, the uh, most accurate algorithms for different machine learning tasks and optimization tasks. So to give you one example, uh, nowadays like uh, everyone talks about AI and talks about training neural networks. So there are a lot of different uh, architectures of ne neural networks. Uh, but actually, regardless of you use convolutional ones or memory ones, like uh, long-term and short-term memory ones, so once you fix an architecture of the neural network, the task about training it so that it works uh, the best in terms of, uh, say, uh, like uh, classifying images and so on, then regardless of the task, the underlying training task there for the neural network is nothing but minimizing a non-convex objective. And therefore, like uh, designing the best algorithm for minimizing a function like this could help us to design better algorithms for training neural networks. One direction which we've already uh, explored in the group and uh, is sure to be uh, <laughs> to be of greater importance is involving uh, stochastic processes that go beyond independence. We have seen in several examples, in particular, learning with switching costs that it's important to consider stochastic processes with long-range dependence.
The special thing about our group is not only do we have you know, world-class mathematicians and, and algorithms researchers, but we also have world-class engineers on the team, so about 50-50 split. Uh, and that synergy between engineers and, and researchers and mathematicians really is part of the magic that makes uh, you know, what we do possible. This is what a modern supercomputer looks like. Uh, so this is a, a very powerful GPU card. This is what AI runs on today. So AI requires this level of processing. Our goal is to be able to run those same AI workloads on a processor like this. So this is a little ARM Cortex M4. It's about 50,000 times less powerful than what we currently use to run AI workloads on. Uh, and that's a very challenging mathematical goal for us. There are very few places in the world uh, that I think have you know, the, both the world-class foundational mathematical research uh, as well as the ability to, uh, you know, to deploy it, to, to use, to see how it works in the real world, in products, uh, and so on. And this is an opportunity for our uh, you know, mathematical work, our theoretical work, to really change the world, to really have an impact uh, on everyone and on everything.